That's so unfortunate. <laughs> but slacking is pretty good. A lot of other moves that have taken out Charizard there too. <laughs> Uh, you, losing stuff to slacking in uh, Seafloor Cavern, that's definitely never happened to me. What's up? I'm Pokemon Challenge and probably the best Nuzlocker in the world. Today we're reacting to Alpha Rad's new Nuzlocke video. Well, it's not really new at this point, but how I survived a randomized Nuzlocke. So we, we've reacted to Alpha Rad's video before, and um, today we'll be reacting to another one of his. Uh, this time a randomized Nuzlocke, so we'll see if he has any more horrible friends in his Discord voice call today giving him advice or if it's gonna be if it's gonna be better than that. Let's let's jump into it. As always, this is an educational resource for you to become better at your Nuzlocke if you're watching. Uh, this is not meant to any content creators or anything. Let's watch it, shall we? Hey, I've been reading a lot of dystopian literature lately, and you know something I notice? All the times it's about people being tracked, people being followed. Do you not like that feeling? I don't either. That's why I use NordVPN, the sponsor of today's video. NordVPN allows you to route your internet connection through 5,200 different servers in over 59 different countries for added anonymity in your online endeavors. There's no data logging on, on NordVPN. If you've been doing a little traveling again, now that you know we've been able to do that again, if you're using public Wi-Fi, it might not be a bad idea to secure your connection with a VPN. You can have up to six simultaneous connections using NordVPN. And not only that, it also allows you to watch a, diff a bunch of different shows from a bunch of different countries by routing your connection through these countries. One of my personal favorite shows of all time, FX is Fargo. Um, available on German Netflix. Not sure if it's available in the US yet, but Thanks to NordVPN, that shouldn't be a problem for you. You have a faster connection thanks to NordLynx. They have 24-7 customer support. And if you don't like it, 30-day money back guaranteed. Don't be like Joseph K. Secure your connections. Make sure you're uh, all secured up and uh, go use the link or coupon code in the description. Pokemon challenges or NordVPN.com slash Pokemon challenges for a discount. Thank you so much for NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you guys on the other side. See you guys on the other side? That makes no sense. Thank you so much for NordVPN for sponsoring today's video, and I hope you enjoy it. Today, I'm keeping Twitch chat on screen. You guys are allowed to stay. For now. Ah, Pokemon Nuzlocke. Home to the kindest comment sections known <laughs> to YouTube. Just use Bite on Alakazam. Wait, was this from the... I'm actually curious. Oh, it was the Arcanine, right? So this guy is actually just super wrong. If we go back in the old video. So this commenter is like, Hey, just use Bite on Alakazam. I'm very smart. I'm a good Pokemon player. Bite is super effective against Psychic because it's a dark type move. I know the, the type chart, and I know that Bite is super effective. So why is he using Flamethrower when it's clearly not super effective? Well, my friend, let me tell you about a beautiful thing called Stab. Same type attack boost where if you use a move that's the same type as the Pokemon using it, you get a 50% boost, right? So if we do the math here, Bite is 60 base power times two for being super effective is 120. Whereas 95 times 1.5 from the stab boost is 142.5, which if you, if you look at it really closely is actually greater than 120. So in conclusion, you're a dumb f So you know what, Alpha Rat, 100% right. Comments on Nuzlocke videos, f horrible. I agree. That being said, some of those plays in that in that video were pretty unacceptable. Recently, I attempted my first Nuzlocke, and I'd like to think it went well, no matter what other people might say. Oh look, it's me! <laughs> the biggest difference of this adventure compared to the last one is that this one will be completely randomized. Even our starter could be absolutely anything. So as usual for this journey, I was in a Discord call with some friends as they watched oh. me play, and just for oh, fun, no. I let them guess out of the 386 oh, no. options in Pokemon Emerald, who was going to be my starter on this randomized journey. Okay, so yeah, so this is a standard Nuzlocke, except we're doing, uh, I'm assuming he's using items and all that. We're doing randomized, uh, which is a little bit of a different beast. Personally, I don't do a lot of randomizers. I think the things that it changes about the game are a little weird, 
um, and not very skill testing. It, it is, I guess, in a sense, skill testing, just in a different way where you have to play around a lot of like very random factors. I'm assuming he's not randomizing like move sets or anything, which is something that you can do, which is interesting. Um, usually randomizer just for like contents you can say, oh, look, I got a Mewtwo starter. Woo. That's a, that was like Nuzlocke content for the last like 10 years on YouTube before I came along. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> let's see. Let's see what he gets. Groudon. Which isn't a bad guess by any means. I mean, everything's equally likely, but I mean... Oh. Okay, no, you know what? I'm not even going to look at what the other ones are. I'm taking Groudon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, you know what? That's fair. That's a pretty good starter to start with. You, you got, you know, you got the permanent sun. It's, it's, it's decent. I mean, it's worth looking at the other options. Um... Technically, a Kyogre or maybe even Mewtwo would be a better starter here. But, you know, chances are that this was probably the best starter that you were going to get. So let's see um, how interesting this run is going to be now that he has, like, literally one of the, like, top five best Pokemon he could have gotten for this run. Saw into the future on that one. I don't so know what Groudon's game early game moveset is. Time it starts with Mudshot, which is actually a pretty damn good move early on. It's a stab ground move. Also lowers opponent's speed, which is nice. So yeah, that's our uh, off to a, off to actually a pretty good start there. I, I thought maybe Groudon didn't get any good early game moves, but it does. It's sometimes a concern for legendaries. Another concern that you can have for legendaries early on as starters in your randomized Nuzlocke is their XP curve is extremely slow. They don't gain XP well they gain xp as quickly as anyone else but they need a lot more xp to level up so they're get generally going to be a lot more under leveled than things like starter pokemon and and stuff like that so one massacre later and we were rewarded with pokeballs it's now time to catch our first companion in cyndaquil and we're out of pokeballs luckily po yeah you love to see it especially in randomizers early on but depending on what your settings are in the randomizer i'm assuming you didn't do a lot of L a lot of other stuff in universal randomizer you can usually choose that catch rates are limited in the early game but if that's not changed you're going to encounter a lot of pokemon early on like that cyndaquil Our first companion in cyndaquil starters actually have a very low catch rate like they're pretty hard to catch other pokemon that you can encounter here too so making sure that you always have a lot of balls on you is one of like most important things in randomizer nuzlocke because um, you're going to encounter a lot of Pokemon that are hard to catch, you want those. If you encounter a Legendary, you're probably just straight up not going to catch it, no matter how many balls you have in the early game. So getting the ground on as your starter pick where you can just get it for free without having to catch it is even better. But the hardest part about having a Legendary Arena starter trap? is that his stats are too damn high, and it's impossible to weaken anything without killing it. So True. we needed an assistant. We needed the catcher, who immediately lived up to his name as we entered Route 102, and the wow. catcher caught the catched. We had a few early battles, but ultimately we also had Groudon as a starter. But a broken starter can't fix a broken home as we confront our absentee dad who gives more attention to the strange green-haired kid who is That's definitely really on Twitter joke. still posting about national decks. We had some That's a scary really good joke. Anything that can explode is considered a scary encounter. I think you live this? Um, yeah, some, some early Pokemon will have explosion early. I'm pretty sure you live this. Ground has pretty good defense, and you're like five levels ahead of it. Um, if you don't get crit here. To me. Upon entering Petalburg yeah. Wood. Wait, that's that's actually all that did? Anything that can explode is considered a scary encounter. Damn, that's actually crazy to me. I thought that would do at least 50%. To me. Upon entering Petalburg Woods, we were greeted with the perfect specimen, War Turtle. And to Beautiful. my surprise, he stayed in the ball. With Captain Kid in the call and ready to give me excellent advice, just like last time. Instead of, it's time for me to. That's a, that's a good callback. This is my favorite moment oh, yeah, in that that's run. That's I was gonna say. Give the quick claw to Mewtwo is because uh, if you could proc quick claw and then have the flint. What did I say, Brayden? What did I say? Well, despite that, I offered to name our Blastoise to be after him. Wow, nice, nice. We get a Blastoise. Yeah. Okay. Brayden, you want this named after you, right? Absolutely, yes. The first obstacle in this run was a random Aqua Grunt who happened to have a level 9 Swampert. I know Drought is active, but I was terrified of drowning to a single water move. And he only knows Tackle. Yeah, yeah. yeah so early game move says this is at most going to have Water Gun, but it doesn't even have that. Is there anything that Groudon would actually be afraid of at this level? I guess if you only have Mudshot, I guess anything with Flying type or Levitate might be a problem for you. So the problem is going to be too. So the problem that... Alpharad's gonna face here is um, he's using Groudon for everything. It's gonna soak up XP for everything. None of his other Pokemon are gonna be leveled up at all because he's not gonna f grind because he has a f Groudon. So as soon as he encounters something that is a flying type and he can't hit because he has only Mud Shot, um, he's gonna be in trouble. I mean, his Wartle is level eight at this point. That's actually fine-ish for this point. 
Um, oh, also pro tip, you can skip that double battle if you deposit everything but one Pokemon in your party. You can just run by it because they're not going to engage you if you have less than two Pokemon. Because now it's time to focus on the Rust Burrow gem. So let's do a little bit of grinding. So oh, he's actually going to grind. Just ignore everybody else. Roxanne started with an Omanyte, retreated with a Machop, and got desperate for a Growlithe. That gym was a cakewalk. I know I probably got one of the best starters I could have had, but like, Roxanne could have just had Kyogre. So just how lucky can this Nuzlocke run be? All right, guys, new encounter. Oh, this one's huge. I, I feel it. I know this is a huge a get. Yeah! Oh! It's not bad. Yeah, my favorite Pokemon of all time, Absol. That's a good. That's a good Pokemon to get. Favorite Pokemon of all time being Absol is a little, a little sus. You know, it is a little, a little bit of furry bait. You know how it goes. I mean, this is good to have early on. It's got good stats, it's got good attack. Um, having a dark type isn't necessarily a bad thing either. I know how good Azul's early game learn set is though. I don't know if you're just like using quick attack or something. Anything that doesn't evolve or is like fully evolved at this point is probably going to be good. So he has enough balls to catch it. Monochrome, Crescent Moons, little cat thing. <laughs> What's not to love? Recently, I actually made a tier list of every Pokemon in existence. And Absol is sitting up right there on top because... Right next to Vaporeon, who, as we all know, is, um... Yeah, don't worry about it. This run is so... We ran out of Pokeballs. Which... Oh, wow. Who would have thought? Which brings us to our second Team Aqua Grunt, who happens to have... Okay! <laughs> that would be a problem. Yeah, yeah, true. Um... Just to assert dominance over a rival who's already... Wait, ruined... how did he beat it? <laughs> I'm genuinely curious! Wait, why wouldn't he show it? I, I'm guessing he had another. Oh, did he have ancient power? Let's see. Oh, he had ancient power. Okay, never mind. I mean, yeah. So at this point, you have ancient power and mudshot, which famously rock plus ground, pretty good uh, type combo. Pretty damn good coverage. I think the only Pokemon that resists that in this gen would be Breloom and Claydol. I think. Is there a third one? Flygon. Those would be the three ones that can't hit, that can't be hit, uh, at least with neutral, by ground or rock. Yeah, everything else you're going to be able to hit at least neutrally, and you're a Groudon. So honestly, uh, I don't really see how he loses. Onward to Duford, and we are ready to get a brand new encounter in Granite Cave. Yo! Uh, that, that's Yo! Really cool. Pretty good. <laughs> well, pr pretty good. God! Pretty good once you get to like level 50 and you can actually evolve it into Flygon. Before that, it's pretty dog sh but. Flygon is top five on my list and one of the strongest Pokemon in Hoenn. So far, this run just cannot get any better. I, I forgot to get more Pokeballs. Who would have thought? <sighs> uh, shake it off. This is fine. Uh, we probably didn't need Flygon anyways. Single <sighs> puzzle. Yo, uh, what's this Pokemon? Yo, Joe. What's up? I just wanted to see if you knew what this Pokemon's name was. Well, his name's Gulpin. Gulpin, these nuts. Sadly, this yeah. run was okay. far from perfect. Actually, very good for him to omit em that and leave that to the viewer. Why are you using Jigglypuff, bro? <laughs> I guess it's more of a fun run than anything. Perfect, as we happen to lose the catch, but thank God the catcher will replace them soon enough. Raleigh's ace Gyarados was a little scary, but he got Jome domed as we spammed ancient power. And, 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 I have Pokeballs. This time we w. will catch it for sure. Crobat. That's pretty good. Honestly, not bad. My good friend Aaron. Nitmark Crobat is actually fantastic. Um, if you're doing a Nuzlocke run on your own, those early Zubats that are so annoying, actually so good. Once you get that Golbat evolution, grind up some friendship, run back and forth for a while, or, you know, edit in PK Hex, who cares? And um, get yourself a Crobat. It's a f good Pokemon. It's great defensive typing. Um, super, super fast. Gets decent moves. Good Pokemon. Should probably be on your Nuzlocke team if you have one. For us today. Whoa! Ooh, that's going to die to Ancient okay. Power. That's not That's not Pikachu. I don't know how, but this little Pokemon managed to lay in five protects in a row. Oh my god! <laughs> that is pretty unlikely. <laughs> That fifth protect had a 6% chance of working, and he still lost. <laughs> Fine, I lost. Oh! oh that's pretty good. Oh, well, oh. it's it's good once you get to a level 55 and get Salamence. Before then, it's dog shit, but... I guess you could say things are going well. But what if they were weller? Okay, new encounter, new encounter. Oh my oh. god! God damn. What? Oh. Honestly, that one? Oh my god. Okay.
So finding a Beldum might seem fortunate, but allow me to um, um, actually explain why it's not. In a Nuzlocke, you only get one catch encounter per round, and I've essentially wasted this entire encounter on Beldum because this little bastard possesses a near impossible yep. catch rate. For example, True. it's more likely for you to get accepted into Princeton twice. So what I'm trying to say is that you would have to possess phenomenal luck to be able to catch this Beldum. Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. So take a look at this team. Well, but also, it, it also doesn't evolve until 55 or whatever. Metagross, obviously fantastic Pokemon. Um, steel types in general are pretty damn useful, especially the earlier in the gens, the better generally. But, um, I mean, getting a steel type gen one would be pretty good. This one actually, even like before you get the 55 and you get Metagross, even if you just get like Matang, if you just get that evolution, which is still pretty late, is, is, is pretty good just because you have a steel type and steel types are amazing. Tang's stats aren't even that terrible. It's mostly the typing that's really good. Metagross is 45. Um, I mean, that's a little earlier, I guess, but still, it's going to take a while. But even Matang is good. Matang is level 20. Okay, I got my numbers wrong, actually. This is a randomized Nuzlocke, and they just gave me this team. I really thought this game was going to be a challenge, but I lucked into an impossible team. In all honesty, <laughs> how could I possibly lose with what life has handed me? Sometimes God has favorites. What can I say? This is a pretty scary matchup, Machamp and Aerodactyl. I'm trying to think how he dies here because he's obviously setting up him dying with how he's editing the video or he's doing the voiceover. I don't think the arrow could, should be able to do too much here. I wonder if the Machamp is gonna like survive a hit and revenge crit the Groudon. I feel like that could happen. Oh, that's something to look out for. Generally, if you're watching your like, you should always be wary of revenge because that does a lot of damage with stab and then you can crit and stuff like that. Hey. Groudon was even offered okay, never mind. Volka, but like, do we really need it when the whole world gets jomed on by a single earthquake? <laughs> I think we'll be fine. I mean, honestly, you could probably just teach it here. If you have like a ground move plus a rock move, your coverage is fine. You don't really need anything else, so you might as well teach it. Bulk up's a pretty good move. Like, setup moves are fantastic in Nuzlocke. While on top of a volcano, I guess, Archie is talking about his plan to meet Groudon. On a way. That's Maxi that he is moments away from having his entire team swept by, you guessed it, Groudon. With another Pokemon gym right around the corner, I thought I would stop by, peep in, murder every living creature in the vicinity, say hello, and collect my fourth gym badge. <laughs> Which was clearly a great challenge. Hopefully the fifth gym will prove to be a little more difficult, and nope, uh-uh, nope. At this point, I genuinely do not know how we can lose. This team might as well have been crafted by the gods themselves, and it's the exact team I would have made when I was eight years old. And even what we had sitting in the box wasn't bad. This um was it? Um, I'm I mean, you have a Sunkern. <laughs> this is actually a really awful box. <laughs> Doug Trio's okay. Castform's horrible. Flareon's not great. None of these Pokemon are good. <laughs> Whizcash is okay. This looks like a trash lock box, no? <laughs> This run has been so incredibly mindless, yet so incredibly fruitful. Just like my entire channel. <clears throat> uh, subscribe for more. Please? Hey, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well if you're watching. But then we revealed another nearby Kecleon as Crawdon, which is a... F um, real quick, just a reminder. Um, it's not actually true, but the blue thing does look like it's Crawdon's lips, so now you will never be able to unsee that this blue thing is Crawdon's lips. You're welcome. Hey, Cab, all crabs are bastards. Then we had to take true. out Winona, which, if you've watched the rest of this video so far, you know how this ends. It ends with Groudon. Every battle in this video will end with Groudon, and that is a promise. It is literally impossible at this point for it to go any other way. But upon entering Lily Cove... So, the Universal Randomizer program also has an option to disable legendaries. Listen, it's fun to watch, like, once one of those runs where someone gets, like, the early legendary and, like, breezes through and, like, once in a while, Oh, look, it's this Pokemon. Oh, wow, it's that Pokemon. That can be fun, maybe once. Like I said, this is what Nuzlocke content has been on YouTube for the past 10 years. It's not, in my opinion, not that great. I mean, like, it's Alpha Rad. He, he's making it really entertaining. He's a really funny guy. To play this, any um, randomizer that has legendaries activated will either have A, you getting a legendary as a starter and breezing through like this, or B, will have your run ended by a random legendary that one of your opponents has. Um, that, that's like the only two ways it can possibly end. So, I mean, like, randomizers in general can be fun, but I feel like if you do it like this, 
that there's just a very good chance that it'll end another way. You can finish this in a quick three hour session. That's true. Yeah, bit of a speed run, I guess. I made an incorrect decision to challenge our rival in an entirely optional battle. Why was this a mistake, you ask? Because he had a wheezing who likes to explode all over our little crowbat. <gasps> no, Unlucky. No, no. Oh my god, dude. Oh, crowbat was huge, but we, we knew it was a possibility. <sighs> Just one. Only one fatality. Well, I mean, does it hurt? Yeah. Are we gonna move on? Yeah. So yeah, the nice thing about Crobat, I guess, was that he could use it in the double battles as Groudon's partner and just Earthquake everything. Uh, you can do that with Charizard too, though. And he gets the sun boost on Charizard from Groudon, so it's Charizard's going to do more damage. Seems fine. Our team is so stacked that you would have to Jome Dome the entire squad before losing would even start to feel like a possibility. Our next destination was Moss Deep for the seventh gym, and before that, you had to foil both Team Aqua and Team Magma's plans. It's not hard, it's just time consuming. The only difficult puzzle is- Yeah, the that's the thing, right? <laughs> once you have a legendary, once you have a f team of f legendaries, <laughs> every everything in the game doesn't become hard. It becomes time consuming. I feel, I feel like that's- that's the issue here. That's the issue at hand. It's not hard, it's just time consuming. The only difficult puzzle is the one that haunted my dreams when I was in third grade. But despite that, it really came down to the battles with Maxi and Archie. In regards to Maxi, I find it hilarious how fixated he is on Groudon, yet still unaware of which Pokemon of mine is going to sweep his team starting with... Oh, Ooh, okay. <laughs> okay. Cool. Sure. Well, All right. It's not like he has another legendary. Oh my god. Okay. How? Yeah, why does this guy <laughs> think he needs ground on? All right. Okay. Well, I was right when I said every battle would end in a ground on victory, but whew, thank god it was ours. No match for the Jome Dome. Well, that was an yeah. interesting battle, huh? Anyways, fast forward to the Aqua Hideout raid and yeah, that's Zapdos, and uh, I forgot the name of this Pokemon. <laughs> I'm so forgetful. Anyways, uh, let me know in the comments what this Pokemon's name was. Ah, <laughs> silly me. Then the most tilting part of this entire run was the lack of foresight on my part since I randomized all the items on the ground. So when I should have picked up a Master Ball, that's God, no, it's not <laughs> so a like Master Ball, it's a heart now. scale. Then as we continued our journey, our next random encounter was Lugia. We didn't catch it. But now imagine if I had a Master Ball. And then we- Yeah, again, if you encounter legendaries in the wild in these runs, you're probably not going to catch them anyway. So I guess that's a plus-ish. <laughs> Lugia would have been pretty strong too. This random Snorlax had leftovers. In fact, every random Snorlax in the area had leftovers. Yep, so that is a thing. So speaking, if a little Murkrow would be pulled out of the box and agree to use the team- Look at those advanced strats! That's how you do leftovers. it. That's how we do it in like Dryano hacks. If there's a wild Munchlax anywhere, those usually hold leftovers. You get to thief those. In, in randomizers or like enhancement hacks, if there's wild Snorlax, wild Munchlax anywhere, go there. Thief your leftovers. It's like the best item in the game. Jim, that was full of double battles. No, oops, oops. Captain Kid, don't die. If he gets critty, he's dead, oh right? God. Yeah. Oh my god, uh, it's... Wow. <laughs> okay, but what if? You know, I thought it was gonna happen. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. So, new strategy. All you have to do is spam Groudon's Earthquake to Jome Dome the entire island, while you have Charizard, a flying type, who ignores all consequences of Jome Doming. After acquiring another badge, we had to team up with Steven Stone to stop Team Magma yet again. But not even the former champion was immune from getting Jome Domed. Also, I forgot about the entire wait, underwater did he... former champion. <laughs> oh, wait, this is, sorry, this is Steven Smetang. I got Twitch chatted there. Was immune from getting Jome Domed. Also, I forgot about the entire underwater cavern thing in this entire game, but I kind of mentioned it earlier with the demented boulder puzzle thing. Nothing interesting really happened here except for the fall of Team Aqua and, uh, oh, actually, uh, perhaps the slacking one shot in my Charizard because I was using the weakest move I had for some reason. It doesn't matter. <gasps> it had flail and it was like at one HP. That's so unfortunate. <laughs> but slagging is pretty good. A lot of other moves would have taken out Charizard there too. <laughs> but yeah, that's like the thing, right? You have your legendary, you breeze through the game. You're not using your, your legendary for a bit. And you're immediately going to use it because you're not paying attention. Uh, you, losing stuff to slacking and uh, seafloor cavern. That's definitely never happened to me. This thing has Whoa. now become absolutely terrifying. This was stupid, and I feel bad. Charizard literally had um, a move that allowed him to attack every other turn, which is perfect for fighting slacking. 
But again, our team is incredibly stupid strong. And as we mourned Charizard, the game played the cutscene that made every seven-year-old in the world pop off before telling us to recruit Rayquaza. Uh, Rayquaza? I actually never learned how to pronounce it. What music was that? That was sick. After another was that Kingdom Hearts? I feel like that was Kingdom Hearts. Hold on. Did it. Sorry. Wait, Sonic Colors is so specific and does, doesn't sound right at all? Then it's probably right. I did it. Quan threw multiple tricky puzzles our way, but I was in control. I might have had some careless losses here and there, but they ultimately don't matter because our team as a unit is invincible. Every battle ends with Groudon, and this one will be no different. Oh. I guess that would be the one way to make an interesting fight. Oh, sh he didn't teach bulk up, and now he's gonna get f for it. He basically needs a crit here. How does he win this? The one decision <laughs> that I was able to actually criticize in this run <laughs> ended up mattering. That's. <laughs> I definitely tossed that one aside, didn't I? We're faster, and I'm gonna crit right. Actually, going for slash, not a terrible move here. Going for the high crit rate, I respect it. That's actually not bad. I don't know how many bulk ups he used though. Probably not that many, seeing how he already did a little bit of damage. Probably want to start by using Earthquake. It's a huge power difference. <laughs> Earthquake does like more than double the damage of Slash here. So if he had like six bulk ups and it's your only out, you probably want to go for Slash. Other than that, you probably want to go for Earthquake because Slash deals less than half the damage of Earthquake. So yeah, probably want Earthquake. Right here. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Oh, God. Don't let the Jome Dome go down to a Jome Dome. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Oh, my God. No shot. God damn. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, BM, dude. Oh, so the final boss. We should have known that's how it goes. We die here. We die here. Oh, <laughs> no. Well, that's the run. <laughs> well... This run was nothing more than a simulation. They gave me everything I could ever ask for, and I carelessly took it all for granted. Groudon is the key to any team, but Juan showed me that a Groudon spamming Earthquake is only as strong as the trainer who was telling Groudon to spam Earthquake. Like Icarus, I flew too close to the sun and only ended up with memories of a simpler time. Our team was invincible, but I am only mortal, as an army is only as strong as their general, and I regrettably let them all down. True. At least, I never told a lie. Earlier I said that every battle will end with Groudon spamming Earthquake, and I was unfortunately correct, as I met the most poetic end imaginable. If I happen to learn anything from this run... So, I have a question. Why wasn't Salamence in this battle? The Groudon showed four moves. Fire Blast, Slash, Earthquake, and Bulk Up, right? It doesn't have ancient power. Salamence? Oh, Shalgon died? Wait, but there was just footage of him having a Salamence. What is this? He caught another one, right? What is this? He kept playing. Oh, this Groudon is 49. And the Groudon that died was 48. Oh, Shalgon's right here. I got very confused by this piece of footage. I got really confused by this. Yeah, if he'd had a Salamence here, he would have been fine, but obviously it's also a little bit high level. I guess, like, okay, let's try to actually learn something from this. So, if you have one of these randomized Nozlocks, and you do have a Legendary that you're breezing through the game with, you still need to think about your lose conditions, and they shouldn't be that hard to think about, right? Like, you need to think about what are the things that can actually stop me? The answer would be, for example, another Groudon that maybe has bulk up. That would be a big one. Kyogre would be another one here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that actually like 1v1s. Like he 1v1 to Mewtwo earlier seemed fine. But like those would be like the main two ones I think to think about. Maybe Rayquaza, but probably you have like Ancient Power. There's also Wobbuffet. Yeah, Lottie Twins would be awkward. So to the, just think about that and then make the rest of your team accordingly. So you have an out for those situations. Seems like the play, right? Because in these randomizers eventually you will probably encounter those lose conditions and you just need to build for them. It's actually like pretty easy, right? And then just think about that and build your team accordingly would probably be the way to go. 
Um, so this was definitely winnable, but also pretty stupid. <laughs> happen to learn anything from this run is that every move in the game Breloom? always feel stronger. I don't think Breloom would win. Opponent who's doing it. Anyway, that was a great video, Alpharad. Uh, the, the content itself wasn't that interesting, but um, Alpharad's pretty funny, so go subscribe to him, and go subscribe to me. And I suck at YouTube outros, so make sure to leave a comment. And as always, we'll, we'll do our Nuzlocke rating that we always do at the end of these Nuzlocke reviews. And uh, today, Alpharad has earned two out of seven hyper potions. Put them on the screen for his Nuzlocke abilities. Wow, amazing. Um, see, see you guys in the next one. Bye, and break character. <sighs> God, I, f I f hate putting on that persona of mine where I act really smug and act like I know everything about Nuzlocke and I act like I'm really good.